So soon the last Avengers movie uh, will come out and I'm a huge uh, like comics fan, uh, Marvel and DC and uh, whatever. I love good movies and Avengers have some really great art and they also have some portraits posters and uh, I think they are really great and I wanted to see if I can replicate them with a simpler lights and simpler setup than they probably had on set because you know it's Hollywood movies with a huge budget. So let's take for example this poster of uh, Ant-Man, the actor is uh, Paul Rudd, uh, I think it's a great uh, portrait, maybe a bit too much uh, saturation, especially on reds, but I think it still looks great. Small spoiler, I don't really know why they made him like dissolve or disintegrate because uh, he wasn't on the previous movie when everything happened, but uh, let's see, maybe it's just uh, to get some mood or something. So let's analyze the lighting in this portrait and we can do it in uh, two ways. First, in every portrait or maybe in almost every portrait you can see the light setup or at least most of it in the person's eyes and you can see here that we have at least like three maybe even four sources of lights. We can see that we have here on the right side probably a flash or strobe with some modifier, uh, maybe a softbox because we see that the light is uh, spreading across his face so the light source is probably uh, big. We can also see a source of light kind of directly in front of him and also one, probably this is a reflector or something because it's pretty big and it's coming from below. Also we can see the light on his face because we see like from this side, from the right side of the camera or left side of Paul Rudd, we see a big illuminated part of his face and from the right side of Paul Rudd or left from the camera we can also see like a rim light or something like this that illuminates a small part of his face and also separates him from the background. We can also see that both lights from the right and from the left probably comes a bit more uh, from the upside because we see his hair from the sides illuminated quite brightly. And this flare, I think it comes from the real flesh that uh, illuminates him from behind. And in this way they can illuminate and get this rim light in addition to what they have from behind and really separate him from the background. Let's conclude. In this picture we have one main light from the left side of Paul Rudd or right side from the camera. Another light we have from the right side of Paul Rudd that gives him this rim light and separates him from the background. We probably have a reflector from beneath that uh, kind of separates his jawline. Also we might have this light from the front and another light from behind his head. So it's like one, two, uh, three, four, five sources of light. So let's try to do this with a simpler equipment. I don't have five lights, we will use probably two or three lights and we'll try to make it as close as possible to this picture. So we'll use two flashes with softboxes, uh, another light will help us from behind and the reflector will help us to illuminate the face and separate the jawline. So let me walk you through the equipment. For the gear I use my old camera, 600D from Canon. Uh, for the lens it's 50mm 1.4. Uh, I wanted to use a kit lens but I don't have it now. Uh, but I wanted to use a kit lens so you will see that you don't need like super gear to make cool photos and portraits. Uh, but I use the settings that you can use also on your kit lens like 18 to 55 or something like this because I use aperture of f uh, 5.6 and more like 8 or something like this. For the trigger uh, I used Yongnu 622 like 622 or something like this. Uh, it has buttons and I have the control from the camera over all the flashes so I don't need to run like you know back and forth and stuff like this to adjust my power and the uh, settings. I use a wireless trigger also from Yongnu. It's Yongnu 603. It's wireless. You don't have to use it but it makes your life easier because again you don't need to run and uh, press the button on the, your camera to take the photo. You just 
take the trigger and trigger the camera. I also use a USB cable to tether it to my computer, to Lightroom, so I can see the pictures instantly in Lightroom in the big screen and not on the 3 inch display. For the lights I use uh, two flashes from Yongnu again, 5, 6, 8, uh, Mark II or EX2. Two is for Canon, the regular one is for Nikon. It's cheap uh, HSS and TTL uh, flash, I have two of them. Also for the trigger I have the Yongnu 622 as I said. Those are some cheap speed lights and you really can use any light you want. Also I use this softbox, it's not very large, it's from Godox, I think it's a 60 by 90 centimeters with one layer of diffusion. And another one is like octagon or whatever it's called. It's also a softbox but more round and approximately the same size as the rectangular one. And the last thing is this uh, reflector. It's pretty big uh, reflector. I got it from eBay for like, I don't know, like 20 bucks or something like this. It's a 5-in-1 reflector and I use silver side. With a small addition of this one, it's very old uh, strobe. I usually use it as a video light because you see it has modeling light but now we will use it like some very weak uh, backlight. For this picture we will use this softbox just without the diffusion material because it will give us some more uh, specular uh, light. Let's see how it goes. So this is the light diagram that I built for this setup. It's a bit more messy but I hope you can follow along. So we have the subject which will be me we have the main light here from the right side that will illuminate the left side of me with a softbox. Also nearby we have the reflector that I said that will illuminate kind of uh, this side of the face and will give us a separation of the jaw. From the left side we have uh, another softbox without the diffusion and nearby we we have this strobe that will help us to get some rim light around the face and separate me from the background. So here is the picture from the camera with some light uh, adjustments in Lightroom only. We can see that we actually managed to get the light almost like in the picture. It won't be like 100% uh, the same, but it's pretty close. We can see the main light from the right side, uh, a smaller light and harsher light from the left side. The illumination on the hair is not the same, but also my hair is not the same. Unfortunately, I'm not Paul Rudd. But let's see if uh, with the help of Photoshop I can make it closer to the poster. So this is the final image of my uh, replication of uh, Ant-Man poster from the Avengers uh, Endgame. I think it looks pretty cool. In the poster we can see that probably they used some 3D particles for the disintegration effect. I didn't. I just used the regular uh, disintegration technique that you can find on YouTube. And of course my budget is not like a Hollywood budget from the movie posters. But I'm pretty happy with this picture and it looks uh, kind of cool. I feel like a superhero. So let's summarize. You can replicate a lighting setup by looking in the portrait in the subject's eyes. And in those eyes you can see almost all the setup at least from uh, the front of the subject. Of course you won't see the light from behind, but still you can see all the lighting in the eyes and of course in the picture itself. You can see where the light is located. You can kind of guess uh, what kind of light it is like what uh, modifiers were used by the fall off of the light. Uh, maybe you can replicate it with the distance or maybe with the size of the light because the distance of the light and its size affect the, the quality of light. The fall off or, and the shadows, they are harsher or maybe they are softer. You can see it all in the picture. And once you see it, you can replicate it with the things you have. And main thing, you don't need to have like hugely expensive equipment as you saw I used like pretty cheap and kind of basic stuff of course great equipment helps and maybe I would get those uh, results faster or maybe better results or better lights but equipment shouldn't stop you from making great pictures so if you like this video please subscribe click on this bell button so you will follow each time when the new video uploads get your equipment Get a great pictures, become a great photographer and have a great week.